good. How are you doing? I'm, I'm really well. Thank you for joining us at the Museum of Graffiti Artist Talk Live program. Um, I was letting folks know that you are in uh, ground zero, zero of uh, the crisis in, in Minneapolis. And uh, I hope you're well. I hope your family's well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. My family's not here right now, but yeah, definitely um, in ground zero. It's just, a, it's, it's just, I mean, George Floyd died like eight blocks away from here. Um, and like all the protests have been in the area. And it's, you know, I'm, I'm proud. I'm happy to be a part of this neighborhood still. And I'm glad my neighborhood is speaking up and, um, you know, getting to each other. Great. So, um, Shiva, before we start, I, I want to just kind of brief people on who you are. Um, and I'll read a little bit of uh, your artist statement. Uh, Growing up in urban environments, Shiva's art was seeded by years of rebellion. Uh, challenging whatever Shiva could, evolved into a focused and defiant uh, practice uh, of cult breaking cultural nor norms and a constant determination to grow mentally. Shiva's art is an intricate translation of the small to the large. In painting lifelike individuals or designing letters, Shiva uses pencil and ink to develop a collection of rough drafts to further siphon an ideal concept. Applying acrylic, aerosol, and latex paint, Shiva challenges herself to align inconsiderable sub subtleties into a coalesced composition. Discovering new avenues to improve pieces is what encourages Shiva to continue to make art. Now, Shiva, you were originally from Wisconsin-Madison, but moved to Minneapolis, and you are a style writer above all things. Uh, we, we're gonna talk about um, your, your art as a style writer um, and uh, of course, you, you're, you're really quite interesting and talented. I want to dive right into that. Uh, but first, let's let's just kind of talk about what's happening in your hometown because this is something that's really affecting all of us around the world. Uh, and if uh, we can just kind of build on that a little bit, and and as to what you're seeing and how people are responding in your immediate area. Um. Uh, I'm sorry, I started reading the comments. What I've been seeing in my immediate area is just um, people, I mean, it, it's everywhere, honestly. All over Minneapolis, you can find a protest. Somewhere. Just people getting together. Um, morning, you know, George Floyd. Or morning, you know, the like, system in this, like, heavy on us and... Um, people are, are ready to take that weight off of them. Um, so yeah, it, it's just um, people coming together, people showing um, their, their, their feelings, their sadness and looking for support from the, from the community. Or uh, again, maybe it's their feelings of sadness towards the system and, the, and people are done with this. Um, in your experience, in your experience there, um, has has this been under the surface or above the surface? Um, you mean in Minneapolis specifically? Yes. Oh gosh, well, um, just back in like, what was it like, twenty fourteen? Er, er, uh, Jamar Clark was killed too, and it took years to like even prosecute them, um, or even go into trial. So no. No, I mean, this is on the surface. This is on the surface everywhere. It's also deeply ingrained in our system to a point where it, it's become normal. It, it can't become normal. Like, racism can't become normal. You, you know, I'm sure you say, share the same sentiment, but it's deeply ingrained in our culture. Um, what, you know, we all have to unlearn to, like, to learn to, you know, unpack our privilege identify what we have and, and share it with, with each other to try to um, support each other. Yeah, and so in terms of how, how you as an artist respond to that, to have you or even your colleagues responded to the crisis creatively out there? Yeah, yeah, actually I have out there right now, like people in stock are painting the streets. I know Flora, my she's painting and and it's really interesting how um, 
so many writers have okay first off i'm so thankful that so many writers are utilizing our skills of you know just being on the streets painting quickly and getting it up to send a great message it's beautiful it's absolutely beautiful um, we also see like writers utilizing the opportunity to get their name up on the street which why the fuck or why not like this whole everything's coming want to get up your name that yeah uh, uh, uh can i can i get you to pause can i'm sorry can i get you to pause for a second because it seems like we have a really bad connection on on our end and the photos are blurry mm -hmm. um i i'm gonna disconnect and reconnect again I'm, i apologize to everyone but i want to try to get as best connection as i can with you um so um i am gonna log you out and bring you back in Bear with me one, one minute, folks. Of course, we are we're dealing with something beyond our ability to control, uh, which is the bandwidth. And so let me see if I can get Shiva back up and we will start this conversation all over again. Here we go. My apologies. I hope this is a better image for everyone. Uh, give me a thumbs up if it is. I can see you pretty well. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah, so as we're talking about uh, artists responding to crisis, uh, tell me, uh, how, how are you responding? How are your colleagues responding? Um, again, yeah, people are, um, I have, uh, my friends are out there painting or they're out there just being a number in protest um yeah i'm really i really wish i i would love to be right now and i certainly will be after this but um you know i, I hope that as artists we also can remember like like i was saying before to identify privileges and and, and share them uh, um and and people who don't have this uh be it like whatever your your role is yeah, so I, I imagine you're going to go out there um, and uh, lift your voice with everyone because it seems to us here that, um, you know, there's a lot of uh, bedlam going on. I mean, it's, obviously, there's a lot of looting and there's a lot of foreigners coming in to antagonize the situation there. Um, I, I hope that, you know, that that can be sorted out as to how you guys manage all of that. Yeah, I don't know what's going to happen. Um... The, and I, I recently put out a post on my Instagram, so I'm sure a lot of people have heard this, but um, yeah, I just, a lot of people have been quoting a quote from Martin Luther King that's, you know, right is the, is the language chosen by the unheard. People are sick of not being heard. And um, yeah, so we perceive it as bedlam. It's, it's an all out riot. It's a riot and people are doing it so thoroughly here. Um, I have to laugh, but shit is burnt down. Every everything's burnt down. It's quite insane, but it's yeah, it's what people feel like. They and and do, do do you feel safe in in where you are? I feel extremely safe. Yeah. Um. I I mean the only like amongst protesters, amongst rioters, I I feel safe. Um. It's you brought up the looting and stuff. You know. The target that is looted is now a giant free store. The entire neighborhood, if not the entire city, is getting their groceries at Target right now. Um, so it, it's not sure there's specific people doing it, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, just, it, it's, wow. We, yeah, we, we completely, I appreciate you taking the time, given, given the circumstances on the ground there, to kind of inform us uh, and, and kind of just let us know, you know, because again, you know, this is the mo is a real moment in our history between COVID and, you know, the, the racial disparities. Uh, yeah. that sometimes we get caught up in our roles as artists and being artists that we don't consider sometimes what really is happening around, around us. Yeah. But yeah. that said, 
a, a lot has been happening around you. Uh, and, uh, we, we, we are having this conversation because you're a style writer and you started writing graffiti really early uh, in Wisconsin. And uh, so we wanted to know more about your story. I, again, you, you are, as your, um, your bio says, you know, you, uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You, you're, you're about resistance and defiance of cultural norms. So tell me how Shiva came to be and, and uh, the, the writing, how the writing came into your life. Um, yeah, as you, you know, you mentioned that artist bio, it was definitely like, uh, seated in rebellion. I definitely, uh, grew up, you know, I'm a punk, I play in a punk band, you know, um, so always looking for some way to, uh, use my creativity and artistic ability to be rebellious as well and, um, speak my voice, I guess. It's funny how they go hand in hand, huh? Um, so yeah, uh, this is a pretty old one. This was like my first trip to Minneapolis back in 04. Um, God, it's ugly, but uh, <laughs> we all got to say. So this, I mean, finding graffiti as an act of defiance was, was it out of, you, you know, your associations with some of your friends uh, from when you were young or was it that you just kind of grew up in a tough neighborhood or you just were rebelling against your parents? Great, 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 great question. Um, you know, I definitely, I grew up in downtown Madison or I should clarify because there will be people who are like, motherfucker. but um, so I moved to downtown Madison when I was pretty young. Um, you know, the first graffiti I saw there was ITC. Um, that was the first graffiti I ever read. Uh, people like back and um, yeah, all. <laughs> but uh, so definitely my surroundings encouraged that. Um, I also drew growing up, even as like a really little kid, I drew a ton, as I'm sure many artists did. Um, but then yeah, uh, in high school, like fourteen, fifteen, um, I don't know. Um, I met up with my friend Yabo, um, and Yabo introduced me to uh, like people like Maple and um, Winter, uh, Seam. But uh, yeah, on the flip side, after you know making those established er, relationships with these people, um, I was I was saying earlier I was also going to punk shows and and had a older. Um, female sort of took her wing. Uh, she wrote Jat um, from Madison and took me to like um, each two rigs, payback, Ebola, me uh, meter, who does the barbecue there. Um, so how did you find, if, if at all, the correlation between punk and graffiti? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I don't know. I don't know if it like found me before I found. I, uh, you know, oh gosh, yeah, that's actually a super good question. I don't. Know. Uh, I mean, because punk, you know, again, in New York City, the punk scene. Uh, again, there were writers that came out of the punk scene. Oh yeah. Uh, there are those of us that, you know, used to go to clubs that used to have, you know, a punk scene. Um, and there, again, because most people kind of assume sometimes that writing is, is uh, solely connected to hip hop culture, but it's not. It's like, a, yeah. Just like skateboarding too. What, did you have any ties to hip hop or were you just a straight punk? Um. I was, I mean, I, I listened to like atmosphere and stuff, um, but no, I, I didn't dive super deep into hip hop. I've always been open to it, but that wasn't like my stereo by any means, not until way later into life. Um, but yeah, I think it's just a, a rebellion, just like skateboarding. Um, uh, God, I would love to spin this question on you too. Um, but yeah, I think it is just a, a way of leaving your mark and speaking your voice. 
Right. And you weren't afraid to hit the, tr the freights. Obviously, you were hitting a lot of freights. One of the things that I noticed in the slides was that you were writing Shiva with an I, S-H-I-V-A. Here we have a, 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 a painted freight train with um, Naive, is it? Yeah, yeah. And, and you're, you're writing, again, with an I. And there's a point where you change that. But uh, Shiva, it, it, is that a given name or is it is a name that you created for yourself just to be a writer? Um, yeah, you know, I think it came from, honestly, like Mortal Kombat, to be honest with you. <laughs> but, um, so, and then looking at letters, when I was young, um, I, I was really into in the S. I had already been sort of messing with that when I, like, didn't understand the of a crew and started writing anti-school, just because they um, and so then me and Yabo were talking games and um, he mentioned Shiva, which I love. And it's, it's crazy how much I just love that name so much. You know, uh, I changed it in the last because the E is simply a better, a great letter compared to an I, but I can come back to that. But um, also, you know, Sh Shiva, which I, I don't mean by any means to appropriate or talk about religion, but it's the Hindu god of creation and destruction, which, you know, you know, identify reality and how these things go together and how there's no creation without destruction, speaking about Minneapolis. We <laughs> need uh, Yes, correct. And, and sometimes creation is destruction. And it just fits graffiti so perfectly. Uh, um yeah. But um yeah, yeah. I yeah, that's <laughs> but but again, you know, one of the things that's interesting about you is that you've chosen to be a bomber, to be somebody that slash both destroys and creates uh, beautiful art at the same time. Um, with early on showing no interest in nothing but letter forms. Yeah. Um... Why, why just letter forms? That's so. Yeah, it's such a good. Oh, gosh, it goes deep. That's a good one. Um, so if you look at my art, if you look at my sketchbooks, um, I always grew up drawing, like, faces and figures and females and blah, blah, blah. Um, however, I noticed that this was a common practice amongst female graffiti artists that was characters. And so very early on in my graffiti career, I said, no, like, my art is for my sketchbook. My graffiti is letters, and I'm going to stay away from characters, which was probably in the long run and really not. I had more practice. You know, I could be doing both. Um, but, yeah, so it was to, to set myself apart. One of the things, like you said, you know, you had to switch up Shiva from the I to the E, and this is one of the earlier versions of that. Yeah. Um, and, and here we were talking about uh, how you were trying to figure out style writing. And, and uh, at this point, uh, tell me, what are you thinking for yourself in terms of the kind of letter forms you're exploring and uh, why you're getting more and more complicated with your lettering? And, and all, also at this point, you're piecing this good. Surely there must be some talk about you amongst your male counterparts about your talents? Come at me. No, I, yeah, I'm really glad you brought up this, this photo, um, which I, I did with Stryker in, in, the, in Quito. Um, yeah, shout out to Stryker. But so yeah, this was one of my first Shiva with an E pieces. Um, uh, and so yeah, I'm super glad you grabbed that one. Um, but then, I don't know what my male friends are saying about me. I I mean, I hope it's all respect, and it seems like it is. Uh, I have a lot of, yeah, friends here in Minneapolis and around the world. Um, what else was part of your question? I'm sorry. Well, I mean, part of it is, again, how you're discovering style and that, you, you know, because style writing is such a competitive form of art in, in public, um, where you know, and it's of course male dominant. And sometimes I don't, I, again, I, I hate to be cliche about these questions about gender, right? 
uh, because it, it, it artists want to be seen as artists, correct? Um, and you, but you can't like not differ, differentiate um, this kind of talent in, in a male dominated space to say, oh yeah, you guys think you're good. Well, here's a girl or a woman putting it in, right? That's, mm -hmm. that, that's just as good as you or better than you, right? And that can draw the ire of some of the guys. Uh, did, did you face any of that? Any of the like, um, uh, I guess, uh, doubts or chauvinism? Oh my God, all the time. I mean, all the time. I was painting this wall in Madison and it's not just men. I mean, mind you, and maybe it's within myself too. Maybe it's, a, it's just, again, it's our expectations for women to be, you know, not as good as men. Um, it, it's just how it goes. You know, people talk about like going up to shop owners and getting, uh, you know, walls because they just went up and were charismatic. I don't feel like I can do that. Uh, like, I don't feel like people are gonna, yeah, I, I often feel like I have to have something to show for myself before I can even explain um, my accomplishments as a female. <laughs> God. <laughs> well, 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 the thing too, which I do appreciate, and I told you when I saw the drawings, because drawings say a lot about somebody's commitment as a style writer, right? Because it is this exercise in trying to find a new language with the same tone right the same name let's just say and uh you've been super committed to that uh and and in forms that seem classical but again there's something uh that again has become very signature in the way you write your name uh as we see in the black and white drawings um and so to me i was very impressed when i first came across the drawings because they said a lot about style writing and and for us at the museum, our show, our 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 main show is about style writing, right? Paying homage to those who write letter forms, um, and that is that's pretty much all you do. It's you're a, you're a style writer. You you focus on that, and have focused on that. Um, and to me, it if we look at if we, if we as we're looking through your story, I think people will notice there's no pretty butterflies, there's no mushrooms, there's no unicorns, there's no, none of that fluffy stuff. Mushrooms, unicorns, butterflies, love them, just gotta say. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with them, but I'm saying there's such an emphasis uh, on, on your adventures with letters. And mm -hmm. so as, as we think about this, it, you know, clearly um, you have not at that, by this point, this you're you're strictly committed to walls and trains, no interest in galleries, per se or murals. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess yeah. I mean, my I get the most joy out of like yeah, progressing my letters. Um, I'm totally open to jobs, uh, galleries or what have you. Um, but I always say like. Can it at least say something? Like I really want it to have letters in it. Um, if like depending on the price, even like my letters works into the price. Like if you give me no letters, that price is going up. Um, because that's my main goal is to develop my letters. Um, and and as as far as galleries or murals go, I mean I would love to. I'm down. I'm not anti, that's for sure. Um, but really my main priority, yeah, is developing my letters and being... Well, right, and I'm glad you say that because I, this, this, uh, these two decks illustrate that you are a typographer. You're very much interested in typography, not just graffiti. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then my, my friend Whiskey Medicine when we was just saying, I also do, yeah, portraits. But um, yeah, I'm super into typography. I mean, I think it's a really underappreciated art form. Everybody agrees with me there. But um, yeah, the, the role of the sign painter going out is so sad. Um, and I think I love, I don't know, practicing that. But again, you, you've, <laughs> tried, you've tried portrait painters. This is one of the only examples we have of that. 
so tell me why why isn't this so prominent in your work this this other side of your talents um yeah i guess just i would love to start doing more characters it, it's really a time i i um just you know the, the the time commitment that comes with just doing you know a, a burner which is like what i feel like is expected of me to a certain degree um there's not really time for a character I mean, I, I, my friends really need to do characters. Um, uh, Kesara always tells me to do characters. And I draw my books. And, you know, I, I would really like to do more characters. And I, I bet I will. I mean, here we see, it's interesting because uh, this is such a different piece from all your, your, your works that I've seen, a combination of graffiti-style lettering. But the, the rest of, a couple of the letters are standard uh, serifs, uh, standard type fonts, right? Um, mm -hmm. How common is this in your practice to do? You're, you're right, you caught it. This is totally different. Um, I, I, I did that for Art of World, but I also did it because I was like, shit, I want to change something new. I want to play with this stuff. I want to uh, see what I got in me to do just something different. Um, and of course, something different is going to, you know, any letter game is going to have some sort of typography or base um, font style part of it. Um, so yeah, there I was just playing with it, with paint, playing with uh, font. Uh, you mentioned Maple earlier, and you've known him since you were a kid. Uh, you've you've painted quite a bit with him. Uh, yeah, uh, I just signed in, and yeah, he's old school man. So it's interesting, how much of an influence did the New York scene have on you guys in, in Madison, Wisconsin? Um, I think it had a huge, Im I mean, it had a huge impact on everybody. If somebody were to say, or I've heard it, we've all heard it, with people being like, oh, yeah, I don't know, it didn't really affect, that's just craziness. I mean, it can't, you know, I guess I can't say any one place, but um, I would like to. Uh, so how much, you know, I would like to ask any graffiti artist out there listening, like, how much did New York graffiti, did, did Subway Art Style Wars have, how much of an impact did that have on your career? That's everything. That was like the seed, you know, that was the water, that was the soil, that was everything, for sure. And it, but then how, again, you're in the Midwest, how do you find uh your individuality what what if there's a style in the midwest that is a, a signature of the midwest what would that be Ooh, is, that... Uh, is, is there one that's that that's the is there one yeah maybe um i'm sure we all have our interpretations of what like speaks to our codes there are our no codes um for me i feel like midwest is uh you know Solid letter structure and bars. Uh, um, how else do I, I? I think yeah, bars and letters. That's what that's what what I see as Midwest. Uh, everyone feels. So if we if we kind of just go with a wide look at this with a wider lens as to um, how this art has been evolving both in practice in painting practice and letter form practice one of the things that we also see within the last several years is the um the growth of female painters um in, in the scene it's it's quite big and uh, you've you've you said you've traveled you spent a year in in latin america and uh uh there's a lot of great Latin American female painters as as well. Uh, what's your thought on where this scene is going in terms of style writing, female style writers? Um, uh, I think it's great. It does seem to be like there's a lot more girls coming out on um, word work, and it does seem to be like more supportive so it's females are more inclusive or you, you're not surprised by a girl anymore, you know? 
Um, well, you, you have a large crew like Far and Few who've been really with Mehmet just really trying to advocate for women painters. Uh, yeah, and it's, it's almost because, you know, you know, we, we kind of got our foot in the door. Um, even a lot of your, your interviews, your females, um, yeah, I hope it keeps opening up for females and in, in all sorts of minorities for sure. Um, and uh, yeah, as far as fe female style writers go, like, oh yeah, I'm all for that. It's the greatest. Um, I mean, I can talk for days about the women before me, you know, like Lisa, Merlot, all these women, but there's all these new ones that are, you know, I was like carrying out the flame in this really powerful way that like you don't see all the time. Like, like, like who? Mention some of the writers you you're looking at or admiring at the moment. Um, for the younger ones, uh, I would say. Well, I, I've said this before. I think that Little Wana is great. W U N A. Um, we got crazy. Like, there's females painting here. Like bombers, like Tick. Um, peak also um, but the, I think there's all sorts of females out there like developing their style um, the you know mad girls crew down in Chicago they're they're coming up they're just like you know uh, an hour behind me as far as the graffiti collect goes and so as as artists as artists collectives are they autonomous from their male counterparts or do they collaborate with them um that's a great question. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I think sometimes that is the case where you'll see like a symbiotic relationship within a relationship. Um, or, uh, yeah, working with male counterparts, maybe it's like drama. I don't know. Right. Or I mean, one of the things that I like, especially in this image that we're showing where you're signing a young girl's black book, um, <laughs> How how is the response to young young the younger generation towards seeing you paint? Uh, what kind of impression do you make on the younger younger kids? Um, it's a it's a great question. You know, I hate to like. Well, all right. So I I painted the Queens of Style last year, and um, I'm just gonna tell a story. Just so, so yep. you know, but this I. Uh, to, to someone came up to me, you know, they started like, you know, telling me that I was this huge influence on their graffiti and like how they look up to me. It's so flattering. It's so hard to like uh, internalize or even hear when I'm just like, oh, I'm just, I'm just like you, we're just out here, we're just out here painting letters. Um, but then Eski was there. Eski is someone I look up to so much um and and see, getting to meet her was just meant the world to me so um i hope i i can be a role model to women i hope i can encourage younger girls um to or or boys to get in their black book and draw draw, draw and get out on the streets when you can um put your gloves on take care of your hands in the winter you know so now as as we're looking at how you progressed as a painter and we're looking at a more contemporary piece this beautiful uh, shiva wild style which looks like a zebra pattern in the back and uh, beautiful actually your color combinations are great on this i they, i gotta say you know going from blue to black to red um uh with a white outline and a, like it's, a jungle. i definitely my arm there i wasn't used to that color scheme i'm so stoked on it um, but that's a, that's a beautiful thing about painting with other style writers or painting with other people who do um, similar styles to you. You can push each other in, in those sort of ways. I'm sorry I interrupted you. I had to give her no, credit. No, no, no. That's, that's a valid point. It's true. It, it, at, at this culture, this is, it's at its best when we are collaborating. Uh, it really makes a huge difference to a lot of us. Um, so tell me more about this production and, and, and why does this piece, uh, is, it, does it feel so spe special to you? Does it, does it feel like one of your better works? Um, yeah, I like this one a lot. Um, the production, uh, yeah, with Kesara was, yeah, I like it. 
Um, I like it. I think it stands out because, yeah, I had that encouragement to do a uh, color that I wasn't necessarily used to. Um, and, you know, I, I had uh, somebody to, to push me in that way. Time, you know, you paint with somebody who's on the same level as you. They kind of twist your arm. They change you in a certain way. Um, whether it be like that, making me do some crazy triangles inside my stuff or... Um, uh, yeah, River is always telling me to do a completely counterintuitive color scheme. Um, Acer is telling me to do a character. Maple's doing all sorts of fuzzy, crazy crap on the top. It's it's great. That's how we learn. That's how we grow. And it, it's cool that just you know, as graffiti self-taught degenerates, we we teach each other to grow too. Yeah, this is another mural with Acer. Um, uh, this one we really had a lot more control over. Uh, it was, you know, we we planned it out a lot. Really was this a was this a an illegal mural or a, a commission mural? That was that was a legal mural. Um, so yeah, hence we we got some more uh, time to think that one out for sure. Um, but yeah, the Wii Sports theme that was crazy. We really went for that one. So so Shiva, in in terms of of where do you where do you see yourself going with this this art this this just this sole focus on style writing it is this because i mean you have a professional life and then you have this other life as a as a writer slash part-time vandal uh, yeah. and, uh. <laughs> uh to, to what ends right to what ends do you go uh to to uh, fulfill this passion what do you see it leading and and what do you want from it um you know it's already, it's already so fulfilling right now i'm just i'm stoked that or i can answer more directly i promise but i am really stoked that whether what stage of graffiti you're at whether you be toy as hell graffiti is tight because you it gives you something to travel with it gives you something it, it gives you a personality it gives you like something you do it's like again like skateboarding playing an instrument or um anything like that that you can carry with you and like other people um i learned that very really in ecuador before i could speak spanish i was hanging out with writers they would tolerate me um but so if nothing else, it's it's my hobby, it's what I do. But um, to be more specific, where do I hope to go with it? Oh, I really just hope to develop myself, to, do, to develop my brain um, and to get something to be on my toes, you know? Um, as far as money goes, sure, that would be great. If who wants to sponsor me, that would be lovely. Um, but, you know, I... I work so I can do graffiti uh, and I guess my graffiti always does come first and but it also seems again like you're 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 incredibly talented and committed to this and that as if that would be enough for you it, that that you get these pieces off um, and you keep doing it you keep getting better at it um, and Obviously, right now you're 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 becoming a big influence on a on a culture, a generation that's looking up to you. Uh, and yeah. I, and and the thing, the question I have for you is is yeah, then then how do you leverage this if, if towards your future? To you... yeah, um, I, it seems like we constantly, especially when we focus on like. What are you doing? It, the real question is like, how are you making money? Um, and especially right now, especially right now, it's yeah. How are you dealing with Corona and 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 your practice? Um, yeah, that I mean, this work. I'm working. I super privileged to you know be able to continue working and continue what I'm doing. Um, but. Yeah, as far as like graffiti and making money goes, maybe it will be a little, you know, we see it here and it can be fleeting. Um, I just want to keep going out and I keep wanting to painting and I I love like lurking a bit of shit. Like this was 
with Mabel, it was a, I don't even know what it was, but that, there was a swimming pool right in front of us. Like, there's these beautiful abandoned places uh, in the woods, you know, and I want to find them. I, I want to I want to see, seek out the unknown and I want to put my name on it. <laughs> but really, I mean, I get to uh, go into these natural spaces, um, find stuff that, you know, humans have already left rest and um, get to put my art on it, which is just the greatest feeling. No amount of money. Well, <laughs> maybe there is a there. Maybe there is an amount. One of the things I like about this particular slide, there are two things. I, I like the colorways and the and the the style you're using. Beautiful colorways and khakis and 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 uh, avocados and and with a nice white three D with gray. But what's impressive to me uh, is the scale and the size. Uh, the long, expansive lines. It, it reminds me of Wayne CLD uh, and how he draws these big pieces with these very long lines. Yeah, uh, Wayne. He's been, yeah, a huge influence forever. It's so funny. I'm, I love that you say that. Yeah. Uh, but sorry to interrupt you. No, no. But it's, it, it, again, it, it's, it's one of the features that I, I, I found really impressive about the work was uh, you know, outside of the style writing and the painting is the scale, right? If we look at you in relationship to the piece, unless you're four feet tall, uh, that's a very big painting. Yeah, I've heard that a lot. I've heard that a lot. Um, I'm, I'm pretty average size for a female. I'm extreme. Um, but yeah, and I think that really goes back to like painting trains and uh, always having to like push myself to go bigger when you're next to people like Payer, who goes huge as hell, who'll take up the whole train. Um, you know, I'm, I'm trying my best. I'm always on those, like I'm going as high or, you know, nowadays I have a, something, but it can get you into trouble. You know, you have to be able to um, size down your work when you're working with other people uh, that you want to respect. Um, and you know, time is always a a, a factor as well. Um, so, are you suggest are you suggesting that it's also a kind of tactic when you go out and paint with somebody that you you go big? Yeah, I think. Well, I I believe that that's where it was rooted. Was as you know, maybe I can't as a female, but general being a slightly smaller body than whoever's on the other train. I think that was drilled into my mind like go as big as you possibly can because you're never going bigger than this guy um so i i do believe that's where it it, it stems from but um going forward i i love you know being able to build on that and then size it down and do something great so in terms of we were talking earlier about some of the things that you're curious about possibly pursuing in your painting is because you, you, you can paint realistic images, illustrative images, uh, it, although yeah. you, you didn't paint this one. Um, okay. that, there is, that, that is something that it will be coming into your work. So uh, pr presumably in the near future, we're going to be seeing more slash style murals, style yeah. murals. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I already got some in the works. Yeah, for sure. It's so hard, though. Like, if there any anybody can relate to it. Like, are you when you want to come super correct? Are you doing a character? Are you, you're doing both? You have a lot of time and money for paint. Um. So, if I, given the opportunity, if I have the time and resources for painting, that I would love to do both, but. Um, yeah, we all know that most of the time, one or the other. So um, would we see possibly um, any kind of protest mural from you or your, 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 your crew in the near future? Oh, yeah. I mean, um, like, yeah, it's, uh, honestly, we're, I feel like right now a lot of people are just trying to get the letters on the wall. Um, quickly so people know what they're doing is positive um, rather than, you know, just defacement. 
Uh, so a lot of the letters that are going up right now during this time of protest is um, they're really quick. It's almost like they just do bombing or something. But even worse, because I, I mean, you're usually doing or currently we're doing letters that we normally do where yeah. you know, it, says, it says justice, it says enough, you know. Yeah, I, I would imagine it's a little high risk to, to be investing in, in a big mural, I suppose. Uh, but we're seeing more and more murals out there being painted on trains and on walls. Uh, I, this, this moment is so potent for us uh, in terms of being able to uh, facilitate this, uh, this, this skill, right? This really readily available um, and immediate skill to paint something on a wall and just disappear. Mm -hmm. And yep. that, that statement will live in that space. Uh -huh. Um, and uh, that's that again, that to me is one of the great attributes of this culture that it could uh, actually uh, uh, post itself up anywhere at any given time, its message and be clandestine or be very overt about it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's 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 a time where I, I, I believe us artists have some role and some say. Uh, but again, you know. Uh, those of us who the, the concern is because right you're 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 a professional right so the stakes are higher for those of us who are grown ups than it is when when we were much younger yeah uh, uh that said you know there are a lot of risks involved um and yeah uh, but I, but i hope when you you do go out there you know that uh you and your crew or yourself um share with us uh the work that you you produce yeah i mean people are out there right now like i know my right now stock is out there right now painting um currently like they just did a big justice for george floyd like across two like justice for george floyd it's really awesome it's just super awesome that people are out there um even though it's right now it's, it's pretty chaotic it's pretty lawless um but it, it's really great that graffiti artists are using their skills um to add to make justice um in these situations right and it's something that you you more i i would imagine you saw when you were in south america right because they're just very infamous for using creating a lot of political graffiti mm -hmm. yeah yeah so this is a picture from from keto uh we did in a playground um that little girl just has really good style i don't know um Definitely in South America, they're they're utilizing every surface that they can to um, uh, speak up and spread the love, spread their art, and um, it, it's a cool thing. It's a great thing. Well, well, Shiva, our our minutes are winding down, and I want to thank you for joining us uh, at the Museum of Graffiti. Yeah, uh, so much. We, it, yeah, we we support you and other. Uh, writers and female writers who contribute to the culture I and mean, obviously you have been for a, a good long time now and um so i also want to encourage those who are online with us uh to ask shiva some questions uh while we have her here with us <laughs> don't be afraid you have, a, you have a lot of fans by the way even Cess, king Cess, is bigging you up uh Cess won one of the great style masters I look up very unreal. Thank you so much, man. Um, and everyone who's who's joining us, thank you guys. Uh, I don't know if anybody has any questions. You're welcome. To uh, um, I don't. <laughs> uh, I, I don't have any universe plans yet. I'm still working on size eyes uh, in terrariums for sure. Um, well, well, here's a question from Allison. Uh, she's the co-founder of the museum. She asks, what females outside of graph do you look up to? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. Um, you know, a, a lot of uh, like authors are coming to my mind, like first things first. Uh, uh, my Angelou and uh, like, who else do I look up to? I, you know, musicians, of course. Um, uh, God, this is such a good question. Give me two seconds to think. 
Yeah, uh, like a lot of there's like so many activists who are out there like uh, spreading the word for um, everybody and just helping to share the space with people. Like, uh, you know, then we got like I have like professors and stuff that I look up to a lot. Um, it's mostly yeah teachers, and I do love New York. Yeah, that's true. Um, um, but. All yeah. right, so I, I have another question you may know readily. Um, what was your, your punk band's name? And do you do web shows now? Well, if I, if I say the name, it's gonna just, you could just look it up and then you can see the, do you see the me and stuff. So if people might have to do their own research on it. It's, it's not too hard though. Um, uh, yeah. Okay, so, so um, you, you know, you got a, you, you got a request by an OG uh, graph sister, Mick, Mick LaRock. We should paint together one day. Oh my God, that would be amazing. That would be such an honor. Just like this. I mean, that's, yeah. yeah, she's amazing. Yeah, we're gonna have her on as well. And I'm looking forward to that. Maple asks, do you have any cool chase stories? Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> my favorite chase story, yeah, six minutes. Um, I once getting chased. Uh, okay, so I had a rough day, and then I just went out, went bombing, stuff, like went on some scaffolding, um, started painting. This is on Lake Street back in the day, and then I, I like peek out from the scaffolding. I see uh, Hank and Insu biking down the road, and they see me, and they're like, "Oh, it's on!" And so then they start painting, and they just went all over. Yeah, it's blowing my side. Anyway, so the cops came, so we all head off biking, and then, of course, at one point, I was like, shoot, I'm getting away from these boys, like, they're just making me look. So I super quick turned into the alley, and the cops, they followed me, they quickly turned onto the alley right as an SUV was coming on, and they got clobbered by the SUV, and that was, was uh, just a very fun moment for me. Nice. Uh, uh, you got another question coming in. Uh, from Slee Side Heights, favorite city style of of overall graffiti you like, other than your own? Oh, um, I guess I would have. Oh, I'm gonna leave so many cities out, but um, Philly seems to hold it down super hard. Um, in, in Pittsburgh too. Actually, Pittsburgh is sweet as hell. That's I mean, it's just like. Tons of industrial buildings. You got like Vent 26 out there who we're all familiar with. Um, yeah, I guess I would have to go with Pittsburgh for now. Nice. I think my, my, my friend Michael Walsh, who used to write Prism, would be happy to hear that. Yeah, yeah. Old school freight writer over there. Oh, yeah. uh, Killer Keep Six asks, do you have a preference as to what paint you use? Um. Uh, I hate to like side with one like with certain paint businesses. Obviously, it depends what we're using. You know, if it's going on a train, of course I'm gonna prefer like Rusto uh, and accents. If it's if it's gonna be on a wall, okay, I'll just be honest. Ideally, I would fill with Rusto and outline in some sort of fancy paint, whatever. If that's iron, like my Anna belt and whatever. If if I got it, that's a privilege. So. And what is it about the Rusto? Is the, the industrial quality of it? Yeah, just that it doesn't fade. You know, it doesn't. I mean, compared to the fancy products that just are gray in no time. So, in this final minute, um, you want to give your final shout out to your people, perhaps? Um. Yeah. Well, I. I shouted a lot of you out. Um, you know, I wish I got a chance to talk more about like people who who influenced my style a ton. Like you know, like you know, Soton, the uh, goes dollars. Uh, like all those people. Um, I gotta give it up to them. I all of them says score. Um, but then also for my people, yeah. Uh, so shout out to Kesara, Lucy, Luna. Thank you, Keith. Thank you all, guys. Uh, it's really touching in in this like moment, super intense emotion. 
it, it makes my heart really heavy to have you guys here with me. Yeah, we're, we're really happy to have you. And, I, and I'm glad that um, you're safe. Uh, I, and that, again, you, you let people know that you're in Minneapolis. You're right there, ground zero. Um, and that, you know, your city is bearing the brunt of this horrific uh, death. We're all, man, we're all bearing the <laughs> Right. <laughs> but again, you know, part of our role at the museum is to, you know, not just acknowledge our history, but also what our history has produced, you know. Um, and there are many people that are, you know, uh, like yourselves, like yourself and others that have joined me who are have been painting for the last 15 years or so that are contributing in their own way. Um, and obviously your work shows that you've been committed to style writing and the culture itself. Uh, and we appreciate that, I, especially since our inaugural show is about style writing at the museum. So that's really important to us uh, to have this discourse about why people write their names and, and not just their names, period, but with a specific type of style and structure. Uh, so uh, I, you know, I became a fan of your work when I saw it. I, I mean, I'm a style writer myself, uh, but it, it's also important for me uh, in my role in museums itself to advocate uh, not just for the male counter males, but their counterparts, the females who are putting in the work and have been and con continue to contribute. Yeah, yeah, we just got to keep it up, right? We all do. Let's keep well, I mean, you're setting a great example for, for you know, the next generation. Um, and not just, look, I, I, I will say this, uh, it's not just uh, for women. I think as an artist, again, let's just take gender off the table. Uh, the, the quality of your work and your painting is impressive. And as an artist, I obviously was inspired by it. I'm sure a lot of the men uh, and people who were on board with us today would say, man, you're a, a special talent. So, um, you know, in that regard, you know, people like yourself and Mick and Musa, QA, Pink, um, it, you know, it's not just a, a gender issue, it's a talent issue. Yeah, we just gotta remember, you know, that we can compete with the boys, that we are intelligent and that we aren't, we aren't just, you know, little packages of feminine, um, we got more upstairs, we just gotta remember that and use it. Oh, well, yeah, again, there's nothing, it's very interesting in this for me in terms of how we uh, look at style and, and, and uh, read style. Uh, and it's nice that, again, uh, the, the style has no gender, as Matt C said. So. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure, such an honor. Thank you so much, Mayor. Uh, you have a great night. Take Likewise, you be safe out there. If you if you go out there, you know, uh, be mindful and be safe with yourself and others. Okay. Yeah, everybody for sure.